Hi everyone, as you saw by the title today, I'm talking about how you care for fire belly toads. I have had my fire belly toads since June of 2016, so it's been a couple years now. I absolutely love having them. They're one of the easiest species that I keep, or easiest to care for species that I keep, and they're just an absolute joy to watch and interact with and take care of. I love them to bits. So I figured I will use my experience to give you a care video, but like my other care videos, please do not just watch mine. My experience is limited to what I've experienced, so I can't offer you all the knowledge in the world that exists about firebelly toads. I encourage you to watch other YouTube videos, to Google how to care for them, to talk to other people who have them, to look up forums about how to care for them. I encourage you to learn as much as you possibly can before going out and getting them. I want to address that I have my handy dandy notepad here that has literally pages and pages worth of information that I've written down ahead of time so I don't forget anything, but if I do forget anything, I will leave it in the description down below please check that at the end of this video so let's go ahead and get started first things first fire toads are not actually toads they're frogs but they're called toads due to their bumpy appearance that toads typically have while they may be frogs they do have this bumpy appearance and so they're called toads in addition to being like really bumpy in texture they only get two inches long so they stay relatively small you also might actually hear them making noises right now i can literally hear them going right we're making their little noises over there. So if you hear that throughout the video, that's what it is. And I'll also show you guys them making that sound later on when I show you their enclosure. But anyways, let's get back to the list. So in addition to being two inches long, they can range in color from very bright green to kind of a more like dark forest green, like my Mako. My Mako is a dark green. And some of them can even be brown in color. But the thing that makes them very well known and very beautiful pets to keep is their fire belly. So basically, when you flip them over or when you look at the bottom of them, they have very bright red, orange, or yellowish undersides that are actually a warning to predators saying, don't eat me, I'm poisonous. But it's a very beautiful look. So you have that dark or light green or even brown top. And then underneath, they will have a red, orange, or yellow base with the black or brown spotting or splotching. They're really, really gorgeous. And they all look different, every single one of them. I can tell all four of my frogs apart based on their look. So let's go ahead and get into their care. In my experience, they prefer a more aquatic setup. There are two different ways that I've seen people keep fire belly toads, and that is in an eco-earth or dirt setup with a water bowl, or in a setup that is like aquatic and has a land spot or floating cork bark, or like part of it is um, gravel, so it has like a slope, so there's like a land bridge over here and then water over here. So. I prefer the latter, which is the more aquatic setup, and I'll explain why. In my experience, over the two plus years that I've had them, they spend most of their time in the water. And so if you just have a bowl of water and like dirt around it, that's not gonna offer them enough water to actually really, you know, saturate themselves, really enjoy the water, really enjoy swimming. They are very, very active frogs. And so if you offer a lot of space for swimming, they will use that space for swimming. If you offer space for climbing, they'll use that space for climbing. In fact, when you have an enclosure, you have to have a secure lid because they can group, climb straight up the glass. So you have to be very careful about making sure they can't escape. You also want to offer them a lot to interact with and climb with and swim with in their enclosure. Now, how big does the enclosure have to be? It is a minimum of a 10 gallon for two frogs and then an additional five gallons for every frog. I keep my four frogs in a 24 by 18 by 12 exoterra and prior to that I kept them in a 20 gallon long and I think that that is a sufficient amount of space for all of the frogs. Now because I use a mostly aquatic setup, I also have, you know, aquatic things. So I have a sponge filter that I use to maintain the water and I have to do regular water changes and things like that. So basically I have a sponge filter that is little it's like only like this big because it's a very small amount of water that's in there and by small amount i mean it's not like a full-blown aquarium but it is a decent amount of water and you guys will see that later but there's a sponge filter and you have to use that like you would an aquarium you know it helps cycle the water helps keep it clean it offers a little bit of movement on the water surface which you don't want a lot of they're not like super strong swimmers or anything so you don't want to have a lot of water current 
or movement on the water surface. Because it is an aquarium, you're going to want to offer regular water changes and proper cleaning, so they poop in their water. So I use a turkey baster to remove said poop, and at the same time, it also pulls water out. And then I also use a pitcher for water changes. So I treat them very much like an aquatic species, even if they do come out of the water, because they do have to have healthy, proper water so that they don't get sick. Something else that needs to be considered in regards to the water quality is like the conditioning of the water. If your water like from your tap is treated with chlorine, you're gonna wanna make sure that you use a water conditioner to remove that chlorine. They are amphibians. They literally breathe through their skin. Their skin is very sensitive. And for that reason, you don't wanna have any chemicals in your water that are going to hurt them. Personally for me, since I have well water at my house, which is chemically untreated, I can put water from the faucet straight into their tank. I'm very fortunate that way that I don't have to treat it. But you can just simply buy a dechlorinator at like any pet store or Amazon and then put it in the water or let the water sit out for 24 hours I think that's another way you can do it and then it's good to go into their tank so if you choose to do a mostly aquatic setup like mine, which is what I recommend, I really think it gives them the best environment and enrichment, then what you're going to want to do is offer some sort of land mass or ability to get out of the water because they do need to get out of the water sometimes. I personally use magnatural ledges. They're basically foam that is painted and looks like rocks and I set them above the water and then the frogs just jump out of the water onto them and they line the sides and the back of the enclosure so that there's plenty of space for them to really climb and engage with their environment and have a really great time and I'll show you guys that later when I do the enclosure tour part of it but you can also offer cork bark which floats on water for them to be able to get out you can offer rocks like a pile of rocks or gravel that builds up and then they can get out that way just make sure that if you do use gravel or, or rocks of some sort that they are stacked safely so they're not going to fall over and crush your frog and they're also not too small that they can be put in the frog's mouth and swallowed so you're definitely going to want to get like river stones or something that are like smooth and large so they can't be accidentally swallowed another thing that i like to offer in my enclosure is like fake floating plants you can use real live floating plants if you want but i use fake ones and basically the large plastic fake leaves on the water surface allow the frogs to be half in half out of the water if they want or just somewhere to rest if they're not feeling like actually swimming or stretching out their legs and it's also really like it looks good <laughs> it looks like a more natural environment if you have the water toppled with a little bit of leaves I also have some standing plants in there as well that they will climb out of the water onto and they'll hop off of that onto other plants or onto magnatural ledges. Again, it's really just to offer a very interactive space for your frogs. Another thing I want to address about the water is that it cannot be deep. If you see them at pet stores, a lot of times they're like this deep and the frogs aren't even in the water because they don't go under the water like they don't go that deep in the water, not at all. It's very dangerous to have it that deep because they can drown. You're not going to want to have it any deeper than a couple of inches because your frog's feet should be able to touch the bottom and be outstretched like they're standing and at the same time their noses and their faces should be able to be above the water's edge. So they have two nostrils on the top of their noses. Those two nostrils should be able to be above the water line so that they can breathe and also like properly get themselves up out of the water just by standing. It's an absolute must that you don't put the water too deep because that would make them exhausted, that could make them drown, it's just really not good. Have it high enough that they can really swim in it and also stretch their legs out in it but also low enough that they can stretch the legs out and also have their faces above the water if they want to. Moving past the water quality and the water height and all that good stuff, these frogs are diurnal. While they don't need a UVB light at all, they do need to have some sort of day and night cycle. You can accomplish that by just having a bedroom with light in it. Like right now their light isn't on, but there's enough light in the room that they can establish that this is day and when it's dark, it's night. It doesn't have to be like some blaringly bright light down on them for them to realize that it's day. But if you do need to use a light because perhaps the frogs are in your basement or something or they're in a dark room, please make sure it is a light that does not put off heat. These frogs are sensitive to hot temperatures and they should not have heat like cooking them from above. The species thrives at between 68 degrees Fahrenheit and 78 degrees Fahrenheit. So you won't want to go hotter than 80 and you don't want to go cooler than like 65. So the perfect range for them is 68 to 78. Any warmer or any cooler, it starts to get a little, you know, testy. You know, too hot and they could die, too cold and they could like die. If for some reason your house gets colder than like 65 degrees regularly, like 
all year round which is like frigid or if for some reason your house gets hotter than 78 regularly you'll need to adjust the temperature of the enclosure in order to cool the water you can put a fan over the enclosure a lot of people do this with axolotls to keep them cool and it cools the water by a few degrees so it definitely helps and then if you need to make the water warmer you have to be very careful about how warm you make it but you could probably use some sort of aquatic heater like for aquarium personally I have never ever had to heat my enclosure and I'd be very very careful about heating your enclosure in fact I would just recommend that if you can't offer the 68 to 78 degrees naturally that you should probably just stay away from that species so another thing you need to know about fire belly toads is that they are poisonous and they also exude a toxin from their skin so we'll start with them being poisonous they're poisonous if you eat them you definitely don't want to eat them obviously and you don't want your pets to eat them if one of your pets or like you ate one of the toads um it'd be bad they're poisonous if you eat them but they're not poisonous to the touch so if you were to handle them which i don't recommend and i'll explain in a minute but if you were to handle them they may exude a toxin that is mildly irritating to your skin especially if you have like a, a open wound or if you were to rub your eyes obviously you don't want to do that if you have just handled an amphibian but nonetheless, they do exude that toxin and you should definitely be very careful about handling. So one reason why you aren't gonna wanna handle them is because of that toxin. But another more important reason is because what is on your hands may disrupt them. Like I mentioned earlier, amphibians breathe through their skin and their skin is very sensitive. So if you have something on your hands, your natural oils or something other than that, they can be very detrimental to their health. Before you handle your frogs, if you are gonna handle them, which I recommend doing very infrequently, would be you have to absolutely wash your hands very very well and then when you hold the frog i recommend putting a little bit of like the tank water on your hands just so that they're a little bit easier on the skin i know that sometimes like if they're dry and you're dry they can kind of stick to you a little bit so if you put a little bit of that water on your hands it'll help them feel more comfortable or if the frog was already in water then they'll be wet already and that's okay and then after you're done holding them which should be for a very brief period of time you are immediately going to want to go wash your hands don't touch your dog don't touch your face immediately go wash your hands now, that's why I wouldn't recommend these for children. If your kids want to watch them, that's fine, but adults 100% would have to take care of the maintenance of them because kids just aren't responsible enough to remember to always wash their hands if they were to touch their enclosure or touch them, and that's like an absolute must, so I wouldn't recommend them for kids unless like there's serious parental supervision involved. I only hold my frogs when I need to feed them, so I take my frogs out of their enclosure, I touch them real quick and put them down, I don't like hold them and uh, toy with them no I, no I immediately pick them up and put them down I only do this while I'm feeding them and then I put them back immediately and then I wash my hands just like I washed before I wash after and I do this because I can't leave food in their enclosure because then I wouldn't be able to make sure that they're all eating properly and I'll get to that later when we talk about food but I just wanted to mention that that's the only time I hold them when I'm cleaning their enclosure they stay in the enclosure I just clean around them <laughs> And sometimes if they like try to jump out because I have the front opening doors of an exoterra, I'll just kind of like nudge them back in. So I'm touching them that way, but it's very quick as well. Another thing that I think is important to talk about is where these frogs come from. And a lot of them, unfortunately, are wild caught. There's a number of different like subspecies within the fire belly toad like family and so they can come from a number of different places including korea and china and different places in europe but unfortunately like i said a lot of them are wild caught and put into the pet trade sometimes they are bred and put into the pet trade but they don't sell for a lot so people just don't bother to breed them because it would cost more money to breed them than they would actually make from breeding them so a lot of people don't even waste their time doing it which i think is really sad because they're once wild and then brought into captivity and that makes me sad so i personally think that it's best if you were to find someone who breeds them or if you were to find them from a rehoming situation on craigslist or kijiji it just makes me really sad that if you get them from a pet store they were probably once wild frogs which is why when you see them at pet stores they're pretty much already adults as i've mentioned i have a number of fire toads. i have four of them and i keep them housed together and i actually really recommend cohabbing this species you can technically keep just one but boy oh boy are you not going to get the experience of having more than one they are so interactive they're very community-based 
they literally talk to each other like they vocalize with each other they physically interact with each other they jump around they play around they're literally so interactive i definitely recommend having two or more i think having a group is the best i had a friend who had eight of them at once i can only imagine the amount of fun that they had all eight of them but i currently have four and four is a really good number to have like i said one of the ways that they interact is by vocalizing and it's like the cutest thing in the world so if like animals that make sounds like annoys you I obviously would not recommend this species because even my brother can hear them and he's over there so they're all the way on this side of the room and he's over there in that room and he can hear them sometimes they're not super loud they just have like a very like it's a pitchy sound so like it's definitely something that if you hear over and over again you'll recognize it immediately as it's the frogs but my sister thinks the sound is so cute my brother doesn't hate it i like the sound i just it's really cute so like i said earlier i remove my frogs to feed them i have a large plastic tupperware container that I put the frogs in, I remove them from their enclosure quickly, put them in there, and I let them free hunt their food in that container. So I offer them a number of different food items, including um, crickets, small dewy roaches, really tiny hornworms. Um, occasionally I offer them small mealworms, and I offer them waxworms on occasion as well. But because they're frogs, they'll eat anything that moves, so just be aware of that. So if it moves, whether or not it's safe for them to eat, they will eat it. And in regards to being safe to eat, there's a lot of foods they can eat. I haven't really come across anything that they can't, but I would be most concerned with how big the food item is when you offer it. They are small little heads. You should only feed insects that are the width of the space between their eyes so that they don't choke on it as it goes down or it's not too big for their mouths. When a fire belly toad hunts, it'll jump down on the food and then it'll use its hands to stuff it in its mouth. So it's one really cute, also really terrible for the insect, but really cute. And just make sure that you're offering something that will actually fit in its mouth and down its throat because you don't want to like choke it. The reason that I feed them individually is to, like I said earlier, make sure that they're all actually eating so that one frog isn't just hoarding all the food. And two, because I can control how much one of them is consuming. So even if you were to drop food in the enclosure and they were all to get a few crickets, I wouldn't want one of them to get like eight crickets and the other ones to get four or three or less. So by keeping them one by one in the Tupperware container that has the food, I can say, okay, Cora has had X amount of crickets. She's ready to go back. And then I bring Bolin out and then I put Bolin back and so on, so on. Like most frog species, or like most amphibians in general, um, they can definitely overeat themselves to obesity, so it is your job to make sure that you are not making them obese. Uh, you definitely don't want a really skinny frog, uh, but you definitely don't want a frog that's too fat to move. So somewhere in the middle, I don't know how like to explain it aside from just like, you want your frog to be a little round, but not like rotund to the point where it's just like a ball with feet. Like you don't want that. You want it to still be able to get around very well, engage with its environment. You want it to be able to hunt easily, but you also don't want it to be so skinny that like it's just like limbs. Mine are all a good weight, so like when you see them, then that would be your example. If you have young fire belly toads, like from a breeder or from someone who had them and they were babies, and you need to feed them smaller prey items, I'm gonna just go ahead and read right off of this because there's like quite a few things here that they can eat. And I've never had babies, so I never had that experience. Juveniles can be fed newly hatched crickets, springtails, and fruit flies. I also forgot to mention that you can feed cut up earthworms to adult fire belly toads so if you're okay with cutting an earthworm into little pieces and then offering that that's a good source of food for them too and one more thing about their food is that you have to dust it with a vitamin supplement and calcium supplement so just like with reptiles amphibians need calcium supplements and they don't need as much as many reptile species but they do need some i dust their food with rapashi calcium plus which is a calcium supplement that has d3 in it as well as vitamins and so it is a combined supplement it's a multivitamin and calcium with d3 i say i dust their food like once every two or three feedings i tend to dust like things like crickets or mealworms more than i would like a dubia roach because dubia roaches are technically healthier already but definitely still going to want to offer a uh, rapashi calcium plus or a calcium and vitamin supplement um, of your choosing on the insects in terms of how often i feed them i feed my frogs every other day to every two days sometimes it'll be like monday wednesday friday sometimes it'll be tuesday thursday sunday just depends 
Three times a week for full-grown frogs is plenty. In terms of how much to feed them, it depends on the food that I'm offering. So like, if I'm offering a waxworm, I will only feed them one because they're very fatty. If I'm offering crickets, I will offer probably three or four. It depends on the size of the crickets. So if they're like really tiny ones, I'll offer more of those. But if they're like a medium one, I'll only offer a couple. If they're little dubias, I offer two or three. If they're really tiny hornworms, like a couple days or like a week after hatching, then I will offer them one or two. And I think that's it. What else? Oh, cut up earthworms. Probably just um, a couple little tiny pieces. I don't know. I've never fed them earthworms. But use your best judgment. Whatever your frog can eat within a couple of minutes or is willing to hunt within a couple of minutes. We're getting to the end here at 30 minutes. That's pretty fair. Most of my care videos do end up being like 30 minutes long. So that's pretty good. And in addition to like eating um, insects, they also eat their shed so like leopard geckos and other types of geckos and other types of amphibians firebelly toads eat their sheds and their shed is funny looking it's like really wispy and has a lot of like bumps and grooves in it because of their bumps and grooves but a lot of times you won't even see them shed they do it very quickly and they eat it and sometimes there's like a leg or a foot left behind and that's the only way you've known that they shed but most of the time it just gets eaten and last but not least these frogs are a commitment they can live well over 10 years, sometimes more than 20 years, and so you are absolutely going to want to have proper care and the time for the next couple decades, if that's how long you have them. I have seen people talk about firebelly toads and been like, yeah, my son had his for like 20, 30 years. I was like, oh my god. But I'm fully prepared for that commitment because I love them to bits. And we are two years into our 30, potentially year relationship, and I'm super excited about it. I think that's everything. I have finished my list. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys their enclosure now, and I'm gonna talk through their enclosure, show you guys sponge filter, all that stuff. If I'm repeating anything, it's just because I filmed that first. So I didn't know exactly what was on my notepad when I filmed it, but it's okay. Just listen to me repeat myself. Sorry. So I have filmed a fire belly toad tank tour before, but considering the fact that this is a care tutorial, I figured I would also show their enclosure here. Now, it's been a week since I cleaned it, so it's time for a water change. So there's some little poop poops back there. Uh, don't mind that. Frogs literally poop so much. Look, that's Mako right there. Hi, Mako. Let's see if we can find everyone. That back there is, uh, I think that's Cora. Let's see, who else are we missing? We're missing that frog back there. Wait a minute. I can't see her little dots. Okay, so yeah, that one is Cora. That one's Asami. <laughs> Bolin is hanging out right in the middle here. You can barely see him. But I'm sure they'll come out more since I'm in their enclosure. They'll probably think it's like food time. But anyways. Also, I want to note that there's like those little things underneath the enclosure. A bug crawled underneath of my enclosure and pooped underneath of it. It was bug poop. I'm so mad. I like kept trying to get it out and I was like, oh my god, it's bug poop. So it's literally underneath the enclosure. I can see it when I look underneath here. It's very, very frustrating. But um, next time I like do a full clean where I empty it, I'm just going to take it out and brush all the poop out. But it's there right now while I'm filming, so it's bothering me. But anyways, let's get into the tour of this. So basically, we have one, two, three, four Magnatural's ledges. You may have noticed that I also use these in my Crested Gecko enclosure. I love Magnatural's ledges. They're a little on the expensive side, so I don't love that about them, but they're just really, really great. As you can see, they're vocalizing right now and hanging out with each other. That's what frogs do. <laughs> You hear that? You two be nice. What the? Hello. That's Bolin. Hi, Bolin. Look, he thinks it's food time. So something about handling is you're going to not want to do that. <laughs> but he just jumped out, so I had to put him back. My hands are clean. I always clean my hands before I come over here because I know something like that might happen. So like I said in the care video, make sure that your hands are always clean before you touch them. Just try not to touch them too often. So something that I really wanted to incorporate in this enclosure compared to their old one was more space for climbing and for swimming. So they were in a 20 gallon long before, which is completely fine. But I upgraded them some time ago, that video's up, I'll include it at the end, to this 18, wait, this is a 24 by 18 by 12 exoterra. And it allows, like, more water space in terms of, like, 
it's deeper. It's not actually as long as the 20, so it's technically the exact same amount of water space, but I think that it's more easier for them to enjoy because of the way it's laid out. And also the mag natural edges before, they only had two. They had this one and that one at like opposite ends. So there was really no engaging with the back of their enclosure, which is why I decided to get a really large mag naturals ledge and a little smaller one. I'm happy I got that smaller one because I needed something to like build it around. So my, my idea was to have something that starts on the side and goes all the way around to offer them um, complete access out of the water if they wanted it. Although, like I said, they do spend most of their time in the water, as you can see from the frogs right here. And there's also a frog back there. Oh, someone's gonna jump. Are you gonna do it? They always like to, to pretend they're gonna jump and like I sit here and wait for minutes to catch it on camera. Oh. Sometimes what they'll do is they'll stand up here and just dive right into the water. It's very exciting. So anyways, yeah, that one's Cora. But um, they use these ledges to get out of the water, which is necessary for them. And also, as you'll notice right now, he is able to prop himself up out of the water by using his feet. His feet are touching the bottom, and that is absolutely necessary. So this water is a perfect height and shouldn't really be any higher or lower. Hi, <laughs> Bowen. But, um, as I was saying, the mag naturals ledges really allow them to engage with their environment. They do a lot of climbing, a lot of jumping, and so do the plants. Now, the plants, I'm like 100% in love with for the way that their broad leaves float on the water. So I bought extra of these plants throughout the years, and I've just cut the leaves off and let them float on the surface so that the frogs can like hang on to them or can interact with them, what have you. It's a little bit of break from just plain water. It also looks nice. It's good for them, it's good for me. So that's why I do it. In addition to that, they have the tall plants, which also let them like climb out of the water onto the mag naturals, and it also lets them climb between the mag naturals ledges. That, and it also looks nice. <laughs> but yeah, they definitely interact with them. They definitely climb on them. Hey, you two. So that one's Mako. Hey, Bolin, get off Mako! Do you hear all that nonsense? Goodness me. So this one's Bolin back here, and that one's Mako in the front. I actually got those two together, and then I got that one's Korra, and Asami is back there. I got those two together. <gasps> Just kidding. I got it wrong. So this one right here is Asami, and that one is Bolin, and that one back there is Mako. I can't focus on it. There we go. That's Mako. And... This one is Cora. Now, Cora is like the best eater, the fattest, the chillest. Um, Bolin is super active. He needs a little bit of assisted feeding sometimes. I think he's just like a little bit shyer or slower. Mako is complete insanity. Very active, doesn't want to be touched, just wants to hunt all the time. And Asami is an easy eater and she's easy going and you know, that sort of thing. I think that her and Cora are very similar. She's like a more active version of Cora, And she always eats. But anyways, I think that's all I have to show about their enclosure. You can see the water height here, how her foot is touching. Oh, now it's not anymore because she floated up. Um, oh, that's another good sight. Oh, look, I show you how they float. They're so cute. <laughs> and then back there, they have their sponge filter, which doesn't create a lot of current. It just, you know, bubbles right there, and then there's literally no moving water over here. I try to push this plant back there more, but they always move it, and, like, if it's not bothering them, then who cares? I'll let them live their lives. But, yeah, that's the entirety of their enclosure, and I'm super, super in love with it. I've had it for a few months now, and literally all the time, they're swimming around, they're climbing on their magnatural ledges, they're really engaging with their enclosure. 
Um, it's pretty easy to clean in terms of just taking a turkey baster and sucking up the poops off of the floor. It takes about a half hour, once a week, just to make sure I get all the poops. And then I just fill it back up with water, because that's also a water change when you take out the water and the poos and the turkey baster. And then I just fill it with water. And I don't have to condition my water because I don't have um, treated water. I have well water from the earth. So it can just go right in there. And that's it. It's very easy. They're my easiest pets. <laughs> they're just, they literally, they always eat. They're never sick. Their enclosure is pretty easy to clean. They just poop a lot, but that's what frogs do. Um, and they're just so easy. Like, and also they're super fun too because you get to watch them interact and really just love on each other and hang out and it's great. So I think that's everything I have to show for this enclosure. And let's go to the outro. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found this informational and insightful. I really hope you guys like my fire belly toads. They don't actually perform as well on this channel as my other species, but that's okay because I love them and I think that they should probably be featured more. Maybe people will love them more if I feature them more. I don't know. But I hope that you really did find this helpful. If you are here for the first time, please subscribe, hit that like, and hit the notification bell. That way you'll be notified of when I post new videos that could potentially have my fire belly toads in it. I also have tons of other species of reptiles and amphibians and even rats and dogs that you may be interested in seeing, so hit that notification bell, hit that subscribe button. If you're interested in supporting this channel over at Patreon, we have a Patreon, the link is below. I would really appreciate it if you did. And I also have merch and a donation link and I also have social media, all kinds of stuff in the links below. So please go ahead and check those out. And I think that's all. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching. Bye!